If you turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 33. Uh, we'll read a few verses in a moment uh, from verse 1 and um, some of the verses through the passage. But let's pray uh, together as we come around the word. And uh, I'll take a moment in our prayer to remember those in the or associated to the church that are needing prayer due to health. So let's pray for ourselves and for those in health needs. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we're able to sing, many of us, of the reality of, of, of what Christ means to us, what it means to belong to Christ, and um, how precious he is, how precious that salvation gift and that relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blessings we have as a local church here, a fellowship together. And we want to pray for one another. And remember those at this time, we think of uh, Ian's father, Mr. Hope Sr. We, we pray for him, that as he continues through treatment, that he would know your presence. We know that our desire is for not just your touch on him bodily, but ultimately your touch upon him spiritually. And we pray that you would hear the prayers of Ian and many others, that he would turn to you in faith and trust in Christ. We pray for John and Hermina's mother, Mrs. Overwell Sr. We just pray for her at this time as she is continuing to recover from that heart operation. May she rest in you. May she know your presence and your peace, giving to the doctors the wisdom that is needed. And we do thank you that Hermina is able to be with us today, but we do pray for her in the physical need. We pray for wisdom to the medical staff. Ultimately, we look to you for your hand upon her life, and we pray that she would know your blessing. And Father, for others that perhaps there's the unknown request, and physical need, we pray that you would minister and that you would encourage. We thank you that we can gather afresh around the word of God. We thank you that, as we often say, but it's true, your word is forever settled in heaven. That this word that we read is our sole authority. We thank you that we can take time tonight to consider some of the aspects out of it. And I pray that you'd bless the people that have come tonight that it'll not be just the words of me, but it'll be something from God that will touch their lives, that will impact them in their relationship with God and their walk with you. Father, we don't want to be a people who just have our ears tickled, but we realize that we need to respond to your word. And so I pray that you would prepare our hearts and that you'd bless your word to each of our lives and undertake for us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus 33, just read from verse 1. The Lord said unto Moses, Depart, go up hence thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee. For thou art a stiff, stiff necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. Down to verse 11. The Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, and his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. 
And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I might know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he, that's God, said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For therein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separate, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And there at verse 17. Moses here was facing in the time of Israel's history a time where, if you notice the wording, I tried to emphasize that God had said he will not go with them. He would send an angel because they were a stiff-necked people. Moses is pleading here with God because he realizes his inadequacy and the necessity of the Lord being with them. And the Lord then says, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. We often hear reference um, in Christian circles about the presence of God. We pray for, and it is, it is important to do, I believe, we pray for God's presence in meetings. Preachers will often refer to this aspect of God's presence. But I wonder this evening, how much do you know personally about God's presence as a Christian? Here we see this in verse 14, God promises to Moses and to the nation, my presence shall go with thee. And so I want to consider this evening the promise of God's presence. First of all, when our why was God's presence sought for? As we said, the Hebrews have just come out of the land of Egypt, and Moses is given the command by God to lead the people into the promised land. But he had said, I'll send an angel. And Moses knew, not only, but it is important, his limitation. He's only a man. I'm sure you're well aware there's not just a couple of hundred people that are being led out here. This is a vast multitude. Uh, approximately, perhaps the population of South Australia or more. The responsibility on him, humanly speaking. But sometimes... I try to put myself in positions here in the Bible because I've grown up, like many of you, with these stories, and we just take it for granted, well, you know, Moses led the people out. But this is a tremendous responsibility, huge, to be placed upon one man. And so with that responsibility, that's the situation that Moses faced when God gave him this promise. He knew he needed God. It was a time of importance in the nation. And he said in verse 14, 15, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Moses' response is, If thy presence goes not with me, carry us not up hence. In our lives as believers, it's been said when God asks us to do something, he will enable us to do it. Some commentator said, Whatever is to be done at his command may be accomplished in his strength. All his biddings are his enablings. This is important to remember. When God asks us to do something, when he puts something upon your heart to do, he will enable you. It could be something here connected in the church. It could be something to do with Sunday school. It could be children's outreach on a Friday afternoon. It could be to do with the youth camp that's coming up. 
It could be in the workplace or in your family circle of standing up for Christian beliefs or sharing the gospel with someone. We too can seek for God's presence, just like Moses, knowing we need his guidance, his enabling, his power. That's why and when Moses sought the presence of God. Jesus tells us in John 15, verse 5, without me you can do nothing. The more we get to know that, the more we'll depend upon God. The more we depend upon God, the more successful we'll be for God. For in our own strength, it's just words. But in his strength, it will impact for time and eternity. God here had promised his presence to Moses. But you know, if you know something about the life of Moses, you'll know that God had actually promised his presence to Moses before. At the burning bush, when Moses was called by God to go back to the greatest leader at that time in the world, and to tell that leader to his face, you are to let your slaves, the Hebrews, go. Moses didn't want to do it. You remember, he argued with God. And Moses promised, Exodus 3 verse 12, Sure, certainly, I will be with thee. Now, I transfer to this passage we read. Moses, at this point of his life, doesn't say, well, God promised a few months ago to be with me. Therefore, I don't need to seek his presence again. Everything will be fine and just go and do it. And that's a reminder to me that we don't take the presence of God or the blessings of God or the help that God has given in the past for granted today. We need to continually seek his face. We continually need to seek his enabling. Now, some of you are about to do things. Tim's about to do something that's going to stretch him in the next number of weeks. Never done that before. But for some of us, we do things daily. We do some weekly. We do things monthly. We still need to depend upon God in those situations. Perhaps there is a time in your life right now that it is a different circumstances. Perhaps it's a difficult circumstances. We ought to seek God for his presence. It's wonderful wording that Moses says, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. So when did Moses, or when was this presence of God sought? Facing a challenge, facing a new time. But it wasn't just the first time he was promised his presence. So for you, perhaps you are facing something. Remember, without him, you can do nothing. When you find yourself attempting things in your own strength, remember to seek God's presence. When you find yourself attempting to do things in your own strength, remember to seek the presence of God and the blessing of God. Secondly, what is promised here? What is this promise offering? Well, that's quite simple. My presence shall go with thee. This was what Moses needed. It's what Moses prayed for. It's what Moses craved, longed for, desired He needed God. God would be his sufficiency. Yes, Moses was facing an awesome task in front of him. We're not to underestimate that. But he knew that God was his sufficiency. No matter what was going to come his way, Moses would never exhaust the resources of God, the grace of God, the enabling of God, the strength of God. God was all that he needed. This is a promise. This aspect of the presence of God is a promise that you and I can claim. It's not misapplying Scripture to claim the presence of God in your life as a believer. Indeed, as a believer, there are multiple promises of God's presence. Jesus said, Matthew 28, 20, most would be able to quote this verse, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. (coughs) Excuse me. 
when speaking in John 14, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Later on, 14.21, he says, He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Manifest myself to him. The lovely verse that many of us will know, and in the context of today's topic, it's important to remember. Hebrews 13.5 and 6. He has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The promise of his presence. Like Moses, God's presence is all you need. You may be feeling, as I said, a different circumstance, a difficult circumstance, a challenge, an uncomfortable thing. God is able to give you what you need, whether it be a personal challenge, whether it be a challenge in serving him. His presence is your sufficiency. Lovely verse where Paul writes to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, having all sufficiency in all things, may, be, may abound to every good work. He is all that we need. The promise was of the presence of God. Whatever you are experiencing right now, remember God has promised his presence with you. Thirdly, when was this promise given? Not historically, but under what circumstances? This promise was given to Moses in an answer to prayer and a desire for God. Notice the words, verse 13, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know that I may find grace in thy sight. Verse 18, he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Moses, as I've already said, knew his inadequacy. And he calls upon God. And for ourselves, to those that seek God and wait upon him, he will manifest himself. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Isaiah 40, 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But it's they that wait upon the Lord. They that seek him will find him. But you know, as we think of that, as I was thinking of this, how often we pray for or desire the blessing from God instead of God himself. We pray for grace. We pray for strength. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. We pray for wisdom. But all we really need is God. Because God's presence, the byproduct of God's presence is his grace. The byproduct of his presence is his strength. The byproduct of his presence is grace and strength and ability to do and we'll look at this in a, few, a little bit more in a few moments. All we really need is God. It may be a personal need. It may be financial. It might be a spiritual. God is ultimately who we should be seeking, not his blessing. Therefore, we ought to seek himself. The psalmist knew this. He writes these words, Psalm 16, verse 11. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. All that I need is in him. A hymn writer penned it. We're not to use hymnology. My wife keeps reminding me, and rightfully so. All I need is Jesus. He is all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, etc. The hymn goes on. Jesus. But it's true. God is all we need. Therefore, whatever situation you're in right now, or whatever need you're facing, or in the future, remember to seek God's presence. 
Fourthly, and it's the last point, but it's a bit longer one maybe, what does God's presence mean? What does it bring? Now, this is exhaustive, and I don't have the ability, nor do we have the time to, to look at this, but just a few things. What does it really mean? It depends. There's, there's different answers to this. It depends on our circumstances. Because you could just sum it up by saying, well, he'll meet all your circumstances' needs. That's true. But just to think of a few uh, that I considered as I was preparing this. God's presence brings strength and courage. Strength and courage. Joshua was told this. Joshua 1 verse 9. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. A result of the presence of God to Joshua was the courage and strength that he needed to lead the people. When we will feel weak, God's presence is the strength we need. When we need to do something for him, feel inadequate, God's presence will give us the courage and the strength. <clears throat> it brings protection. Protection. In the nation of Israel, a couple of chapters back in Exodus, you have a time whenever they had just left Egypt. Exodus 14, I'll just read a few of the verses. The angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar, uh, the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other by night. The very presence of God brought protection to Israel. And the very presence of God to the believer brings protection. I believe we don't fully comprehend. God doesn't reveal to us the level of that protection spiritually. But God's presence, there is safety spiritually. Knowing that nothing can happen to us unless God allows it. There's peace in that. There is a, 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 an assurance in that to really grasp hold of that. We are his children. We are in the hollow of his hand. Just as God promised to be a wall of fire around Jerusalem, so there is a spiritual protection around you as a believer with the presence of God. So there's protection. There's also fellowship. Look at the verse here that we're considering, one of them here, verse 14. My presence shall go with thee. If God is with us, we can have fellowship with him. We can talk about or discuss indeed anything, everything. Be absolutely open with him. This is something that is promised. Fellowship. Even as we come together, Jesus said, Matthew 18, 24, where two and three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, having fellowship together and with him. But also personally, we can have that fellowship with God anywhere at any time. We don't have to go like Joshua and Moses to the tabernacle. You don't have to make your way down here to Southwest Baptist. You don't have to go to a particular place in your room or your house. Anywhere, at any time, the presence of God. He's promised to always be with us. The presence of God will bring us rest. This is a big subject. This is a big aspect, and it's important because people don't have rest today. Verse 14 says, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest rest. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, rest comes from God. It's a byproduct of his presence to rest in him, rest in his character, rest in his providence, rest in his sovereignty, rest that he is in control, rest in his presence. 
just as a mother's presence brings comfort to a sick child. It's not the medicine. It's not even the father. It's the mother. That child looks for. And just like that, so the presence of God brings rest to the child of God. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. As we quoted before Hebrews, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man will do unto me. Many people are anxious today. Most people are anxious about something. Employment, It depends where you are age bracket-wise as to what concerns you. It could be what effect the BRICX means to your super fund. It could be children, your concern for future, the society that they're going to be brought up, or your grandchildren. We don't know what will happen in the future. We don't need to know. What we do need to know is God. We need to know God. And we need to know his presence. Remember the words that Jesus gave in regarding provision for the future. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Or in other words, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow shall have thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Some of you would have attended the memorial service to Lee Avery. And in that you would have got a little bookmark. In that bookmark there was five points of contentment. The fifth one is, Never dwell on tomorrow. It is God's, not yours, the Lord will provide. Presence of God brings rest. Rest about tomorrow and many other aspects. But one final thought about what the presence of God brings. It'll bring an awareness of sin. You see, sin is uncomfortable in the presence of a holy God. When Adam and Eve were created... They were in absolute perfect union with God. Absolute perfect harmony with God. Their thoughts were never sinful. Their desires were never sinful. They delighted, as man was created for, in God's presence. The old catechism, Westminster Catechism, says man's chief end is to glorify God and to fully enjoy him forever. And that's the way Adam and Eve were created. Perfect union with God. But the day that they sinned in disobedience to God, the scripture says this, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You, perhaps you're familiar with the passage. God goes on and asks them, why did you hide? We heard your voice and we were afraid. Sin is uncomfortable in the presence of God. When Isaiah had that vision of God, he got a revelation of himself. Woe is me. Therefore, I would say the more we become conscious of God, the more we become aware of our need of his cleansing and his forgiveness. The closer we'll get to him, the more conscious we are of his holiness and his presence, the more we will realize that we need to, as John tells us in 1 John 1, 
If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us, the continual tense, and keeps on cleansing us from sin. One commentator said this, Cleansing from sin is a prerequisite for fellowship with him. Cleansing from sin is a prerequisite for fellowship with God. So just to sum it up tonight, God's presence is something that is promised to you as a believer. It is something that you can pray for and seek for like Moses here. The presence of God is all that you need. Not his blessings. They're a byproduct of his presence. And it's something that you can know as a believer daily. You know, naturally speaking, I put myself in this as well as anybody else in the room. Naturally speaking, most people attempt to do things in their own ability. And as Christians, we often only turn to God when something is going wrong from our perspective. The challenge I leave with you tonight is this. Will you seek to cultivate an awareness of God's promised presence personally? I don't believe that's something that we'll find by reading books or listening to the best of preachers or downloading Bible studies or wherever it is. But I believe you can begin by personally seeking God like Moses did. May God grant each of us a desire to learn to cultivate an awareness of God's presence promised to us personally. Let's pray before John comes and leads us in the final hymn. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this um, passage of Scripture that shows us the humanity of Moses, that we can put ourselves in some degree to into that position. We thank you it also shows to us the heart of God in desiring to, to presence yourself in a conscious way, in a real way, in a vital way, into our lives, into the life of Moses, thereby we can see as we've applied it tonight into our lives. And I pray that uh, you would create that desire in each of us. That you would expand that, that you would grow that, that you would water that, that you would fan that desire, that we would cultivate, work at it, practicing a conscious reality of the presence of God and how that can impact our life. And so I pray that you bless your word to each of our lives, no matter what we face Perhaps some of us are going through trials right now. You even know what's going to happen in the future. Cause this word to bring forth fruit to your honor and to your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.